Hello, Tom. Here's your brake booster that I know you have uh, gone around and around having it uh, rebuilt incorrectly multiple times by uh, other people. And I'm pleased to report I've got a fully functional, correct booster for you now. Uh, you, you may recall that you had this. This is your original faceplate that was machined internally and machined incorrectly. So... Um, Unless someone wants to go in there and do some more machining on it, it is junk in my opinion. Also in your booster was this incorrect uh, spring. And also this vacuum diaphragm, which as you can see the uh, perimeter, the edges of it are curdled. And we want a smooth edge similar to this. And you can see they're scalloped and they're not supposed to be. So I have returned your brake booster to the original leather diaphragm inside here which means you need to put um, in the installed position you need to put mineral oil in the booster until it uh, fills up it comes out the, the fill port here and then uh, put your plug in there but in the installed position you're supposed to have some uh, mineral oil in here and as you know you uh, sent me the um, uh, nose piece here that accepts a, a brake light switch and uh, that works and which we will test later on the uh, biggest issue uh, was this air filter uh, assembly here. This is your original air filter. I've got you an exchange unit. And the problem is, uh, even though they put a kit in there, the problem is down inside here, it, um, the seat that the uh, other uh, piece of rubber, th this is a poppet that moves back and forth. And there's rubber here and rubber inside here. And the rubber inside here was not uh, acting correctly or working correctly because the um, seat at which it goes on was in bad shape due to the degradation of 50 60 year old um, uh, pop metal and your is yours is a very early booster as you know because you got this uh, two-part slave cylinder here but also the uh, vacuum uh, uh, test port is on the top uh, which is a very indicative of a um, very old uh, booster a very early design booster I should say also, another indication that it's an early booster is you do not have a bleed hole right here to tell you uh, when your booster is starting to fail internally. Later boosters had a bleed hole that went in there. All right, well, we're going to test your booster. And what we've got here is our vacuum, and uh, both gauges are going to go up and read the vacuum as uh, supplied by my vacuum pump. And as the booster is activated, the, this gauge is going to slowly go down to zero until it is fully activated. Uh, and the booster is applied completely and, and totally activated. The, the gauge is on zero. Over here, we've got our hydraulic uh, input. Both gauges are tied together. This gauge goes up and maxes out. And then this gauge goes and reads final input pressure, which is a function of my master cylinder which is currently leaking and uh, I, I didn't want to tear down the machine and repair it before I got your booster tested and I'll show you how it's leaking in just a second and their output is uh, again this gauge goes up maxes out and this reads final output pressure and this is going to read output pressure right now of just the uh, the fluid in and the fluid out there's no booster activity uh, there's no vacuum so the booster is inert all it's doing is, is flowing fluid in here and out the other end and so what we're going to do is see the same amount of pressure here here and here which is simply a function of what my master cylinder can do now then what you'll notice is the gauge on the left bleeding down that's the input and that's uh, uh, due to the fact that my master cylinder is not functioning correctly right now. But you'll notice I've got 350 here, 350 here, approximately 350 there. So same pressure in, same pressure out. Now, start all over. Now we're gonna hit with the vacuum. right here applies to this gauge right here so 
This is a uh, this is a reading you can do yourself when the booster is in, in your car anytime you want to check it. Alright, so there, now we're going to activate the booster. Since I don't have two hands, I'm going to show you that your that your brake light switch is activating. So you got a brake light switch that works because we still have pressure in there, and it's activating the uh, brake light switch. So I'm very pleased to report that works. Do your booster again. Also, you will, we will check for leaks around any uh, fittings. This, if it's going to leak with uh, fluid and under pressure, it's going to come out underneath here. Uh, the actual ceiling is down inside here, uh, but they travel up the threads and they come out here. Also, we're checking our bleed screws. Uh, you don't need to bleed the booster out of the bleeds, out of this bleed screw. Just use your top bleed screw. Bleed this place first, and then bleed all your wheels, and then bleed your uh, this place last, uh, this fitting last. Also checking uh, no leaks out of here. There's a big copper seal up inside here. Obviously no leaks uh, with our bleed screw, which I've just uh, snugged in there. Obviously it's pipe threads and don't no need to crank down and, and seal it up all the way. Or screw it in all the way, rather. Um, and I, I think... That covers everything. As this booster kicked my ass, but um, I made it happen for you. And uh, hopefully, in time for your show, I appreciate you trusting me to fix this booster where others couldn't. And it was a great challenge, and I, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much.